Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the ETF2L Season 33 Prem Awards. My name is Grumpy Coy, and I'm joined by a wonderful group of gentlemen. I am going to go to my, well, to your right, my left, so that way, my bad. And I'm going to go to Eplee. So how are you doing, Eplee? Uh, I'm all right. Not too bad. I mean, uh, you know, we've had a couple little delays as per usual, but we got some awards, we got some players, we got some lovely admin, full stop. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk some nonsense. Okay, and then we're joined by DCS, one of the league admins. How are you doing, DCS? Hello. Good evening. Honored to be here. Yeah, it's going to oh, be mate. good fun. And then below me, I've got the legend himself, Cadus. How are you doing, Cadus? Hey. Good, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Much appreciated. And then behind him, we've got Smiley Ams. How are you doing, Ams? Yeah. Straight away with a smile. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. <laughs> good, good. And then finally, we've got the man himself. The legend that is Ombrak. How are you doing, Ombrak? Such a legend that uh, I'm here <laughs> to the spots. No, 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 no. You got to think of like game business assembly yeah, Ombrak yeah. memes yeah, and stuff like that. I was so, it's fine. I'm okay with my uh, third wheel state. Uh, oh, I'll take that. But yeah, so we've got the, the award show. So I don't know how we're going to do it. I haven't even been briefed. E please usually more organized than I am, but he forced me to do this. Yeah. because I'm not good at hosting stuff and he's just uh, forced me to do so. So are we going to go straight into it or actually no? I know what we can do. What I'll can start do? with you, Eplee. Hi. What did you think of this season? You did a lot of casting during uh, TFT on TFTV. Well, you did a bit. You did more I than like I did. I, you did more than I did. I, I hardly cast this season, I feel. But uh, how did you feel like the season was as a whole? I think, uh, like, honestly, as a season, I thought it was pretty sick. Like, kind of same, for the same reason why I-Series was so good. Like, we got a top three teams um, in Europe right now, which is, like, super, super good. They could all take maps off each other. We saw, like, you know, good amount of stuff. Like, obviously, faint beating seven in the main season was pretty, pretty awesome. Like, it was two golden caps. Um, it was, like, proper, like, you know, edge of your seat kind of stuff. Uh, going from that already, like upsets into the like semifinals where like Ascent manages to like pound faint. I mean, granted, faint has like their issues, whatever, but then going that to like you know, kind of a, at least a few different upsets, I thought I thought it was pretty good. Like, I'm not going to complain about the season, I feel like uh, it wasn't perfect by any means. We saw some pretty weird shenanigans by our lovely admins. We, we saw obviously the introduction of the, the nine map system, which was controversial, uh, I would say, uh, but you know, I feel like. This is clearly going to be one of those seasons to remember. Whereas, I don't know, are you going to remember season 24? Anything happened in season 24? No, nothing. This one, though, season 33. That's some going to be one that will go down things, in history. Yeah, some things definitely happened this season. And that actually is a good little segue onto DCS because uh, you've been doing admin work for, for quite a while now uh, for ETF2L. But how was this season to... Because obviously, like Eplee said, there was there were some things that maybe people felt like you could adjust about the season. But as a whole, how did you feel like the season went? I think it went pretty smoothly, to be honest. Um, we didn't have any like big issues just here. And there are some match complaints. And obviously, the big thing people were concerned about was the nine map system. I actually, like before the season, I actually liked it a lot. Like have the weaker maps just to, uh, to have played once. Um, and have people focus on the on the standard maps, but um, we are not decided yet if we're gonna keep it. Uh, I can't say much to date. I can't say what maps we're uh, gonna have next season or how many maps we're gonna have next season. It's just um, yeah, I was surprised by how how I did not like the system when I was playing the season because you know basically if you didn't like a map you didn't have to scrim it. Like some people just would skip scrimming a map to prepare for the next one. So that was not the intention we had behind it. But we're gonna see. Okay. And I think I think it's a good move on now because we have got some people who actually were playing in the premiership division of season thirty three. First off we've got Cadis. How did you feel the season went for you in general? Obviously winning season thirty three. Gotta feel good. Yeah, it was good. <clears throat> I mean, I think, to be honest, we kind of had our focus on LAN for, like, most of the season. So the actual season games are kind of a bit of a blur now. I would say that, like, I definitely didn't like the, the nine-map system. I felt like once we, um, like, kind of once we beat Ascent early in the season, we kind of just put all our focus, like, on LAN and played the other maps, like, 
the metal works and log jams like as little as possible with the plan of like just banning them in ETF 12 playoffs. Uh, so we could just practice like the maps for LAN. So yeah, def definitely not a fan of the nine maps. I felt like it was just, yeah, kind of as, as Stinson alluded to, you'd be, you'd be scrimming and there'd be like four maps that were kind of, you know, teams are kind of trying to scrim like four maps at the same time as each other. And um, that's like, all kind of messy shenanigans like that. And I mean, I don't know, as, as like a team leader, it felt like, like I kind of want, I like to get everything, you know, as perfect as possible on all the maps. So when you have weeks where you're just playing two maps that your team hasn't played before, and then one of them you only have a week to like perfect, it just felt like all a bit, a bit muddled and messy to me. So yeah, but the season, it was, a, it was a nice season, right? Like it was nice and competitive and the land that followed was, was cool. So there's that. It did, it definitely to me felt like a very competitive season and obviously you were on seven which did win out season 33 and then we also have ams from ascent which were the runners up uh, how did how was the season for you ams in all, in all honesty it was right um we finished second in the season right so that's a lot yeah. better than our land finish <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was pretty happy with it i think we played quite good um in the beginning, it was a bit rough, but you know it was a new team, and I think it only got better throughout the season. So yeah, I think I'm happy with it. It was alright. I think like for you guys, you were like the the team which had the biggest difference from like week one to week seven, because obviously you were like you clearly had things to sort out, and you know you had a certain like uh, old grandpas to like whip back into shape. But like yeah, like season not season week week one ascent compared to like week seven ascent was like completely different, and. Uh, they showed when you guys like nuked, you nuked down, granted a slightly weaker faint, but you still nuked them down, you know? It was classy. It was That's easy. a joke. Uh, you know the other guy now, I reckon. Yeah. But f finally, we've got Ombrak, the locked character in the bottom of the screen, and he's going to give his opinion like on season 33. Uh, I think it was all right. I didn't really enjoy the nine maps thing at first. Uh, I still think it's a bit weak because we don't have nine maps that are good enough to be played on a full season. I also didn't really get why a map such as Metal Works that we haven't played in Europe for a really long time was present for two weeks when like ProLens was there for only one week. That didn't really make sense to me because I feel like, okay, we played nine maps, might as well play twice the map that we know more. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's some merit to it. But do we have enough good maps to have a nine maps kind of thing? I, I'm not sure. Uh, okay. If I could just segue in yeah. there. Um, with Metalworks, the case was that we really did not want uh, teams to get screaming the map. We really wanted teams to, to force teams to have a look at the map again. I think the last time we played it in Europe was season 17 or 18. So that was, that was my first season. Show. So my uh, first one? And we have basically ignored it all the way. And in A, it's become a standard map basically in all of EZA seasons until it died. And uh, so we did not want them to just cast it aside, but actually have a look at it and talk about it and all that stuff. So that's why it was in there twice. And uh, we put a rather standard map in for once, just for one season. So I think that, it makes sense. Like, um, just, just quickly on, on the Metalworks thing. I think I can, I can see the logic in that, but I think part of the weakness was when you then have maps which, like I said, like you're playing only one time but it's a slightly more well-known map it's like it felt at least from my point of view playing the season like you had to divide your time in like inevitably uncomfortable ways because like you want to spend the time learning metal works but like with the way that things go for most tf2 teams like there it's far far more common for each season to be playing with like a significantly different team um very few teams really are going to be like consistent like across the seasons so it's always a case if you have to like work out maps and stuff but it kind of felt like even with metalworks being played twice you'd be like well do we spend two weeks working on metalworks and then we kind of have to discard that one week map which is involved as well it was it was it was a weird setup i, I think like in a theoretical world where teams were consistent across seasons and you could build on previous seasons knowledge um it would probably work considerably better but yeah it, it, felt, it felt difficult time wise i think yeah, that's fair. Uh, but uh, moving on from there, so we've had a little chat, a little recap, but now we get into the meat of it, why we're all here. We're going to see who's been nominated and who wins the several awards. Um, 
I I know that you've got the uh, you've got the answers in front of you, Stinson. Do you want to yes, lead us with the with the first the first one that it is? Uh, how do you want to do it? Do I, should I read the nominees and then you say? Well, like, what what's the first award? What's the first, the first award, award we're going to be doing? Pocket Scout of the season. Pocket Scout of the season. Pocket Scout of the season. Uh, okay. They have. Ooh. As you can see on screen, the nominees were Yeehaw, Amps, and Thalash. So we're going to go around the board just quickly. So Eepley, looking at these three scouts, how did you feel they performed? And who do you think... Do you, I Clearly all these guys deserve to be here, but is there one that kind of stands above the rest for you? Um, I think it's it's rough, right? Because when Seven wins a season, it's difficult to be like it's always that mindset where you think they're just going to like win awards by the fact that they won the season. So it makes sense. But I always try and base my like votes um, on like the highest individual impact for their team. And for me, like as much as I hate to like big up his ego, Thalash is like an actual nuke scout on seven. Like he's kind of the reason why the team gets to do as well as they do. He does his job and he'll just like, he spent the entire season just like owning. Okay, and then so that's that's one thing. We're gonna go with the actual result now, and then we will uh, we'll have a little chat about that. Can I ask a question first? Space. Yeah, no worries yes. at all. Um, so this is for season thirty three, but we're being late, and LAN has happened in the meantime. So is it fair to assume that people have taken LAN into account as well? I I think people would probably. have pro probably taken LAN into account. So bear that in mind, a pinch of salt, you know? I don't know. I just see the numbers. I don't see the intention behind people's votes, so I can't say. Yeah, yeah sure. I, love, I, 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 think, so. I think it's a fair thing to keep in mind when we're going to talk about these. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, what we'll do now is we will we'll get that result. So if you want to read out, read it out. Have you got like, have you got like the, the, the percentages for yes, each? Yes, I each do people? have the percentages. Go ahead, so, my friend. Third place pocket scout of the season, Yeehaw, with 11.1% of the votes. Second place, our very own Amps, 327 And Thalash takes the crown pocket scout of the season with 56.3%. Congratulations. Congratulations to Am Amps and Thalash. Amps, you can't be sad with second place, though, can you? Of season 33, because it was a really competitive season. Yeah, I'm pretty happy uh, with it. I think I had a good season, honestly. I think it's my best scout season ever. Like, I don't think I ever played so well on scout before. But um, yeah, I think Falash still, you know, deserves it because they won the season. And I think in the important games, he was like way better than me. So I'm not, you know, I'm not upset about it. I think he deserves it. And uh, just before we move on, Cadis, any closing words to your uh, your teammate for getting for getting the um. The scout, the pocket scout, of the season. Yeah, I think um, I think he, I think he deserves it. One thing I would just ask though, I'm just like, to what extent were you calling in your team like throughout this season? Um, we swapped once with Domo, like I think for playoffs he started calling, and then okay. at some point like during playoffs or then after playoffs I started calling again. So we swapped like twice. But okay. I, I called for most of the season, but I think Domo called most of the playoffs. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like yeah, I feel like Thalash probably deserves the award overall. But like one thing, I don't know. One thing I feel like lends in his favor is he gets to play like in more. Of a, I feel like he's in more of a stable environment, so he can kind of play his role kind of more consistently and just you know use his talents like as he's kind of as he's learned because he's been basically playing like with me in like the same combo for I mean, God, God knows how long at this point, right? So I feel like he gets to just show everything that he has while kind of other players are. Sort of like having to learn more basic stuff with their teammates and stuff like that. But yeah, I think Dalash, Dalash deserves it overall for sure. The, the stability is going to be true for, like, I think seven players are nominated for every position and it's going to be true every time because playing for seven means you're playing for a good team already. And uh, so, like, we're going to see players from Faint, we're going to see players maybe from other teams, I don't remember, maybe some Aura Electro players. And every time they're going to have to face both the player from seven and as well, like, the context they play so like whoever manages to take an award from a seven player from uh, no from no one it's gonna be like beat if i said two two kind of enemies um, yeah yeah down with seven that's right let's, let's, get, let's get to the next one 
Uh, next one, let's stick with scouts for a second. So flank scout of the season. Uh, let me check the nominees real quick. Look at these graphics, dude. Classy, Credu, and Starkey. Okay, I'm going to ask Ams, what, what do you feel about this? Uh, these flank scouts? Is there anyone that kind of strikes out? Are you going to go loyal with Credu? Or is there anyone that surprised you this season? Yeah, I think I voted for Credu, if I remember correctly. But um, I think um, at LAN, like Stark was so good at LAN. So it kind of changes your, like, the way, like, you remember it, you know? I think for the season, I never, like, really even, like, rated Stark on Scout. I just kind of thought, like, he's just playing Scout because he's lagging, so he doesn't want to play Soldier, you know? <laughs> so I didn't, like, think it was that yeah. good at all. But um, at LAN, he was really fucking good. So... Yeah, I think for LAN, I think Stark would have been the you know flank scout of the LAN, maybe even. But I think last season, I just think Credo was better last season, like individually. Um, maybe you know Stark's a better team player than Credo, arguably. But like I, I think just you know, I think Credo just has more impact, honestly. And Classy is really good. I think Classy is like really underrated, but they came third place, so I think it was between Credo and Starkey in this in my opinion. Okay, well, all three players do deserve to be here, but uh, DCS, can you read us out the ranking for these three players? Yes, uh, in third place we have Classy, in second place we got Credu, and Starkey takes Rigged. the title. <laughs> Rigged. <laughs> oh. Oh, I want to clarify. Do you, do you want to do 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 jump in on this, e play? Yeah, so I I actually thought um, kind of similar to what was mentioned before. Like I felt like because of how seven was in the season, I felt like Stark didn't like individually as a player didn't have to do as much on his team than some of the other guys. I actually thought I thought it was going to be closer between Classy and Credu. I think I tossed my vote for Classy uh, instead of Credu primarily because um, Credu would spend a lot of games like sniping and stuff anyway, which is a different category. Um, and I, I, I thought Classy genuinely did like really, really well in the season. Like considering he's a pretty unknown scout, um, I thought he made like really big things happen within his team. Um, and I kind of thought, yeah, like Sark had a quarter season because he could have a quarter season. Like if, if Seven were encountering like bigger, bigger issues, I feel like, you know, Stark would have been able to toggle on as he did at land, but I tried as much as possible not to let that affect things. I thought, you know, Classy might, might get a little bit more, but at the same time, it's difficult when you're against, like, proper legends like that. I feel like I feel like Classy is a really, really good Fang Scout. And kind of, as I'm said, he's, like, quite underrated, but his play style is not, like, it's not, like, a, a flashy, like, award-winning style of play, right? He kind of, he plays, like, really low heels for, like, a 2019 Scout, even, like, as a Flank Scout, which mm -hmm. does, like, a really good job of, like, enabling uh, his team. Like, they obviously have that really tight seeds Tomas Lucas set up. And then you also have like Pappy main calling, meaning that there's kind of naturally more heals taken away from the scouts just to you know, facilitate the main calling role, which means Classy is like such a low resource scout, but still gets like so much done and facilitates all of these like deeper workings of the team. But unfortunately, it's just not, it's just not the type of stuff that wins you awards, right? Like people don't remember, people don't remember looking at logs and be like, wow, that guy didn't take much heals, you know, he probably gets the award, you know, people see like yeah. the big plays and whatever. But I think, I think, I think Classy wins it, but. I think Classy deserves like like extra credit beyond like what you get in an award. Just wanted to throw it out there. That's perfectly fine. Ams got any got any opinion on 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 the re result or on Brack? Do you guys want to jump in? I really don't think Stark was that good online. Like I think people just vote for him because he's Stark, but I don't think people remember like um, how he really played online. I don't think he was impressive at all. Like. In my honest opinion, I think both um, Classy and Cardo were better um, flank scouts online than Stark. I, and feel like I think Stark's a sick player. And at LAN, I think Stark was like crazy good at LAN. Like, I was so surprised by yeah. how good he was. But online, I really think he was just like getting back into it. You know, I think from all the seasons that I've seen him play on scout and all the seasons that I've played against him, I think this was by far his worst season. So I don't think he deserves this award at all. But yeah. I feel like it's it's kind of inevitable, right? Because the season was so long ago, at least it feels that way now, because yeah, like everything true. with LAN happened. I feel like it's kind of inevitable that people's like memories of LAN and like how people played there will bleed into into the outcomes of these awards. Like whether that's a that's probably not a good thing, but I mean it means you get like a 
a perspective on like how everything played out like Atlanta as well. But yeah, I guess that's something just to, as Ombrak said earlier in the show, something just like worth keeping in mind. I don't like I don't think Stark wins this like on name value, right? I think he he wins it because of his land performance, mm. which, which kind of justifies it. But obviously, it is the season award, so it's a little bit a little yeah. bit strange. But I, I don't I don't think he gets it on name value as opposed to just playing good in the more recent games. And Ombrak, have you got have you got anything you want to chime in with? No, I think everything has been said. I voted okay. for Classy, but yeah, I don't think he's up there yet. But all of the three, I think he has the one. Yeah, maybe not, he has a lot of potential to grow into really, really strong. Uh, about the three, Classy is by far the youngest, like just by by sure name value compared to the other two. So they're they're established players and they can play their roles. And Classy's still learning to slot himself in perfectly. So I feel like he will get get further and further and better and better as seasons go by. But Sh- Sinson, what is the next award we've got to go towards now? We shall move uh, things to the next award. On. We have Pocket Soldier of the season. And when if you're a keen observer, you will have noticed there's only two nominees. And that's because mm. simply uh, because the Prem players didn't nominate anybody else other than these two. So it's not that we cut anybody, we don't like anybody. It's just the, these are the only two gamers who got nomination. Uh, we had Papi and we had Captain. I'm going to so go... What, 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 oh. what I want to know is, aren't there any other good pockets in Prem? Yes. I think Polygon's Obviously. Really I think Polygon's really good. I think like, uh, uh, Amstin, Amstin do the nominations for his boys. So I think there's some... <laughs> There's some, ascent, there's some ascent nominations missing, and you know we all we all just nominate our teammates. So I feel like Polygon got screwed by Am's mismanagement of the nominations. I'm sorry, Polygon. <laughs> <laughs> I would have voted for Polygon personally. I felt like he did a really really good job, especially how he he progressed. But with between Papi and Captain, it's two very different roles that they kind of fulfill into their team. I think uh, Captain has the Thalash vibe. Um, just in the fact that obviously he plays with Hugh Cat, uh, Cadus, and he's he's probably not filling as much of a main core role as Papi Papi is for for fame. So I feel like Captain can really show off his prowess. But I feel like Papi did an amazing season as well. Like, what would you think on that, Cadus? Yeah, I think I don't know. For me, just looking at like this is not necessarily how I look at it, but just looking at like pure like soldier performance on the server. I feel like Captain, like Pocket, Roma doesn't matter to me. I feel like Captain is unparalleled. But in terms of like what you add outside of just the physical, like, you know, soldier gameplay, like Pappy does like such a good job as a caller. Like, I think he's the only that I can think of, at least in like the top three teams. I feel like he's the only like actual, like natural caller, right? Like the guy who properly leads the team and is dedicated to that role, like, you know, no matter what. And I feel like he does, he's like, you know, he's got them like really well drilled. So I feel like he deserves like a lot of plaudits for that, and you know, I think you know how much you factor that into the vote for for Pocket Soldier of the season is always like a bit of a contentious issue. Personally, I think it's quite important, but I think Captain is just so good that, that I kind of I tend to lean toward Captain anyway. Shall we? Uh, shall we find out? DCS, do you want to give us uh, the second and first place? Yeah, um, looks like people agree with Cadus because Captain uh, takes the title by quite a margin, by two thirds of those roughly. So no surprise here, it's still seven to beat for tonight. I feel like Captain has had that award, like at least in the seasons that he's played, he's just had that award on lockdown for like five years. It's gonna take it, it's gonna take some special to get it away yeah, from. Yeah, it, it really is. I feel like uh, Ombrak disagrees right now. Ombrak is like shaking He's his human. head like crazy. Like... <laughs> no, I don't like that reminds me a lot of the situation where um I don't I think it was like four or five seasons ago, uh Ella Quark got the moment of the season, but Cadus ended up having player of the season. <laughs> and uh that's because the role and the class are different things. And yeah. uh, that's what Cadus mentioned. I think Papi within his team has a much more importance. He's much much more important than Captain is. Because he's much more, he's more than just the guy who shoots rocket and protects the medic. He does pretty much everything. And um, I don't know, I feel like that's something people don't really take into account because that doesn't show on logs. Uh, but the reason why Faint is contending for top three, top two, maybe top one someday is mainly because of Papi, because he's calling in a way that he never uh, lets himself get 
uh, affected by uh, the context. He never goes down. His call is always motivated. He's always striving to get forward with his teammates and get the best out of each, uh, each of them. And uh, that's that's something that we're never gonna show in sheer numbers uh, as an individual. So I feel like maybe Catherine is the best. Uh, is a better pocket and yeah, but is he a better pocket by forty percent? Uh, I'm not sure, and I think Papi deserves a lot more recognition um, because he's really, I don't know, he has the drive, you know, he wants to do, he wants to be so good and he wants Spain to be really good. And uh, I remember he played in the semi-final of the season at my house. And so I could see him, how motivated he was to call all the time and to never let himself get down by the events. And uh, I think that's something, yeah, again, it's never going to appear in logs, and uh, that's probably a shame for him. Yeah, I'd agree. Like, I still, I still think Captain like wins it, but Papi deserves like more, probably more re- representation in the vote than what he gets here. I think, like, obviously, I've never been inside that team like environment. Like, I don't know exactly how it goes, but from the glimpses I've had and from talking to people, like, he is a he's like a really, really important piece of that of that team makeup. Yeah, I'm. Got anything you want to want to say? You no. look very stoic, like you're thinking. Got any? I pretty much, uh, I agree with like what everybody's saying. Mm. I think Captain is like by far the best soldier in the game. Honestly, I don't think anybody compares. Like the sort of impact he has for his team is crazy. Like he's he's just better than everybody else. So I think he deserves the award. Um, but I, I agree. Like Pappy's man calling is really good, and I think he's only gonna better at it. And uh, not only like are his decisions in the game really good, and um, like um, he's a really like, quick thinker, you know. But he's also really good at like bringing his team like up, up in uh, morale. Like Ombrak was saying, he's really good at like all of that stuff. He's really good at just being like an all-around good man caller. So I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, I agree with everything that's been said. And uh, for Polygon, like I think it's a shame that Polygon wasn't in the vote because I think he deserves to be because mm. um, he's a really good player. But I still think. Um, he would finish behind like both of those players, and uh, for good reason. Because I think Polygon's just he's like making his way there. You know, I don't think Polygon's there quite yet. I think Polygon has huge potential, and I would rather play with Polygon than you know anybody else right now. Because I you know I fucking love Polygon, but um, he's like making his he's like making his way. He's like he's an up and comer more than these two players. I feel, and I feel, yeah, I feel like I maybe Polygon's that's why captain, you know I think that's what I think. I think that's maybe why Captain gets so much of the vote here because I feel like Pappy gets the, you know, Pappy getting votes for like what he does for the team overall. Captain's getting the votes for like just pure soldier play. But like, I feel like if Polygon had been there, like the people who are voting just in terms of like rockets and bombs and, you know, actual soldier output, I feel like the Captain vote might have got split down like a little bit toward Polygon. Like Captain would still win, right? But Polygon would have taken like Mm. some of those votes away. It would have been a lot more spread. Yeah, I think so. Between them. But moving on to the next ca- category, DCS. Uh, next category would be Roma of the season. With the nominees Silentus, Eertging, and Devo. Or Devo? It's French. Devo. 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 No idea. I, I say Devo or Devo. But, um, but Ombrak. I'm going to go to you on this. Now, straight away, I know I voted for Gink. I thought Gink did an amazing, um, amazing season from Gink. But uh, who, who are you feeling like was was the best out of these three? I would I would take Gink. For me, there's no, mm. there's no argument here. Um, again, a, a bit the same as, as Papi. Gink is, uh, when things go wrong, is the one who shouts back at Papi to say, yo, what are we doing now? Uh, he also has a really good mentality. And I don't know, I feel like I played against Gink when I was in high tier, when everyone else, he won Cadus and I'm so already in Prem and Gink was very scattered at the time. And at no point uh, did I think, okay, this guy's going to play Prem in, in Roamer and he's going to be super good and super annoying to anyone else, um, both outside and inside the game. And uh, yeah, I don't know, Gink is, He's good at roaming, he's good at off-classing, but I think we're going to touch on that later. And uh, I don't know, Gink is an all-around really, really good player, and uh, he does a lot, and he's not afraid of... The same goes for Silences, but he's not afraid of, you know, take one for the team, have really poor locks, and uh, just 
do what needs to be done just for the for his teammates and doesn't really care about how good he's, he's playing, like how one, good he, he chose. Mm. One thing I will say though about Salentes is Salentes has made a move onto a role that previously he's not played much of. Like when I think Salentes, I don't know about you guys, but I, I kind of always imagine him as a pocket soldier. That's kind of where I imagine him to be. So one thing I have to say about Salentes is the way he's adjusted into the role and fits so well with the rest of seven has to be, you know, really respected. And I know, I know this is about the se season, but because the LAN was so recent, like his performance at LAN as well was really, really good. He did some really good plays, play, played the role really, really well. And I feel like that is going to affect it a lot as well. I feel like Salentes is, did an amazing job and I feel like all three of them do deserve to be there. But I'm just wondering where Zemo Zebo site is, Ams. Yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> I don't get it. My heart would have had me probably like torn into voting for Zebo Sai, just because there's a there's a lot of love for this guy. But honestly, like if, if Sil wins, I think it'll be mostly off the back of like a I sixty five, at which point people didn't read the rules of voting properly and they should reevaluate their lives. I think like individual impact, like I do think Gig was crazy. Like, have you seen mm. that frag video? Check out that frag video. He's crazy. Okay, so uh, DCS, do you want to take it away? With pleasure. And third place from Roma of the season, season 33 is Dvo. Not much of a surprise, I think. And um, Roma of the season goes to, drumroll, Silentes. Oh, it was quite close. Hey. Oh, it was, it was quite close. close, though. Let's we see, see the percentages in a sec. Oh. On screen. There you go. That's. What? That's well deserved. That's that's really really close. That's a really good spread. I feel like I feel like Slentes did an amazing job, and uh, yeah, that's actually really well spread. I'm gonna take it straight away to you, Eply. Actually, what you what are you thinking about this spread? Does this make sense to you? Honestly, no, it doesn't. Doesn't seem to for Ombrac. No, I have ideas. I have ideas. I feel like Ombrac's good. Right, easy to get involved because there's a significant French demographic within each F2L. Uh, I'm now being informed the percentages are wrong. Whatever percentage Droga, I think, will mostly be off the back of the French demographic. Wait, what? Like, they love supporting their own. These percentages uh, aren't adding up in my mind. Oh, yeah, that's also not even true. What's going on? I'm, yeah, I'm that's not, why I I'm said it's wrong. Maps, but I don't <laughs> oh, it's, it's wrong. Wait, 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 <laughs> I, was, I was kind of like, it's spread yeah, very, it very, very, very close. Okay, it's better now. <laughs> okay, yeah, this looks. So we're gonna ignore third place. We're gonna ignore third place for a minute. I think that was it's pretty close between Gink and Salentes. I think a lot of people <laughs> Salentes owning at LAN, and they would be like, "Oh yeah, he was absolutely like insane." But I feel like Gink had a bigger individual impact on Roma over the course of the main season. And again, it's similar kind of thing where like he allows Faint to do what they did, like play how they do. You know, I'm just making up words. Like Salentes is undeniably really good, but. I feel like he had an overall slightly quieter season. He did have some fatty rockets, though. I feel like something, something to bear in mind. Something to bear in mind is like, okay, normally we would do like the the kind of the narrative we have in these shows, at least as I remember it, is we put a lot of stock in the playoff games compared to regular season. Obviously, because we have land now, that's kind of like messed that up a little bit. But but usually you would say you know playoff games count for quite a lot, and unfortunately for Gink. I like that game was yeah. just like a nightmare for for faint right mm -hmm. because they had like Thomas on a laptop, they had like That's Happy true. playing from another computer, so that playoff game was like a nightmare for that team, uh, which has kind of I don't know sunk his battleship somewhat. So I'm not, I'm gonna, not going to lie, I literally don't remember really what happened in in the regular season apart from a few like a few brutal memories. But uh, <laughs> so I'm kind of on this on the sill train just because I remember Lan. But I feel like Gink maybe has been hurt a bit by not having the opportunity to maybe show his best in playoffs or for the team to show their best in playoffs. Yeah, no, that that that's really yeah. That was that was all weird. Like that that whole game was was an interesting one. But I do feel like Sill had fit into the role perfectly as well on the seven roster. And I do I do feel like Lana would have affected him very, very positively. It's not going to be the be all of end all, but that definitely affected him because I felt like he did turn up. And like one of the plays he made 
has nearly hit like twenty thousand views on Twitch. Like the clip. That's so a nice series. That's really nice. The, something, that's something nice series. Acceptable. Yeah, but was that the one on Snake nice. Water? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and that, that was that was some spicy. Yeah, and it's just like, and but I don't feel like that's going to be the majority of the votes because they are so close. And I do feel like I feel like Gink would have been affected exactly by what Cadus has mentioned. Um, I'm just gonna we we will move on. I'm gonna leave the floor open. Does anyone have anything else they want to say about the Romers for this season? Anyone that they feel like should have been here that wasn't necessarily um, nominated? I would actually say Azunus, I feel, is a great, great standout Roma. And I feel like he always performs and he's very, very consistent. And I feel like he did okay in the season. He wasn't as impactful as I've seen in previous seasons on All Electro, but I still feel like he is a standout Roma. Is there any any people that you guys think could have slotted in here as well? Or do you feel like this is absolutely correct, 100%? Well, Zebo, obviously. Like, mm. I, I don't mean offense to my fellow uh, Frenchman, but I don't really understand why he's here. Um, especially when, like, if you want to have a French Roman, yeah, might as well put a Zunis in it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Zebo might have been there. I'm actually, I, I think, I think a Zunis would have been a better fit for that third spot rather than than Zebo. But I don't know if uh, other people would agree with me. I don't, I don't like Zebo was there. It's cool for the for the scene and everything for the storyline, but. How how good was he? I don't know. I feel like it was surprising at times, but on the throughout a, a whole season, I feel like Azunis was more more of a threat maybe than than he was. Anyone else, or shall we move on? Something I would just add, not necessarily on yeah. the on the yeah. alternative options, but just on Sil again. Something that maybe like some people don't get to know because they don't see like the inside workings of the team. Like for all the plaudits I gave Captain a minute ago, I do feel like Sil really helped also bring out a good side of Captain. Like Sil did a lot of work in terms of like uh, coordinating bombs and things like that on mids. I think with Stark moving off Roma and us bringing in a new Roma, it was very important that we had kind of the guy who was going to have like initiative and maybe sometimes go against what the the standard plans were. You know, to give us like the clutch plays when you need them or or just different ideas and things like that. And Sil brought a lot of that to the table, which which just like cements him for me. Yeah, that's understandable. What is the next one, DCS? Uh, next one would be Demo Man of the season. Um, with the nominee waiting on VTube. Cadiz, Lucas Tank, and Domo. Okay, so three really good demos uh lucas kind of coming out of the woodwork in the last two seasons and especially his land performances have been amazing uh ams actually no oh yeah i don't know i want to leave this one open i want to leave this one open um but i will ask ams how did how was it how did it feel on domo like how are you feeling with domo this season because he was you played with him previously and then uh, on the seven roster if i remember correctly and then you've I moved... haven't played him previously ever. Yeah, you haven't. Oh no, no, no my memory is bad. Never mind. Ignore that. But carry on. T- tell us your experience with Domo this season. Yeah, I love Domo. He's good. He's um, he's really keen. He's got really good DM, like super good. Like the sort of damage he puts out sometimes is really crazy. Like he's just an all-around great player. I think um, in this vote he will probably be third, just because you know Cadis is Cadis and. Lucas is, you know, the people's champ. People love Lucas. But um, yeah, I enjoyed playing with Demo. I think his Elvis for he was pretty underrated. And um, yeah, he's a good player. And he's really smart about the game too. Like, he kind of proved it when he main called for us. He's very smart. I think the problem with his main calling was that he didn't really take kind of enough authority over the team. He wasn't maybe confident enough in himself to do it on that sort of level that you need him to like do it on. Or, like, he didn't talk as much as he should, maybe, because you know, maybe he didn't believe in himself enough. But he's a really smart player, and he's he's really good. It was a joy to play with him. And he's a nice like teammate. That's, that's everybody in my team. Like that was why it was such a fun team. Everybody was just good teammates. Nobody was like toxic. And everybody like owed up to their mistakes. Nobody was like blaming each other, you know? And that's I think that's the best part about Domo. He's he's like that, you know, he's a good teammate. So yeah, he's probably gonna be third, but I I take Domo over Lucas, even though Lucas is a beast. But 
I'm biased, but you know, I think oh. I'm on Lucas Saturday. <laughs> there has there has been a lot of love for the tank. Uh, what we'll do is we will get the results and then we'll open the floor up again and we'll have a little discussion on that. So, uh, DCS, far away. Uh, in third place, Amps was absolutely right. Uh, sadly, Domo. Um, with not a lot of votes, to be honest. Uh, but the surprising thing here for me, at least, is how decisively Lucas Tank won Demo Man of the Season. Kate is in second place. So I'm... the first the first award not to go to seven. I've done it, boys. I've done it. Chat, you've managed to do it. Oh my god, 61%. That's pretty yeah. pretty significant. I don't think it's like I'm honestly not too surprised about it though. It's kind of similar to like the other seasons, like even seasons and seasons ago when like Elacor would win demo of the season in similar situations, because Elacor would like absolutely like nuke people. And then Lucas will like absolutely nuke people, but your boy Kato over there, he 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 can be like the dad of the team and like doesn't have to nuke in the same way. Like the teams are just organized right. very differently. As much as Lucas claims that he just gets shouted at by Pappy runs around in pipe things, I mean like it's undeniably effective and people really like watching that style of demo. Like it looks really good on the streams, and obviously it's like it's really significant for how their team like works out. Obviously, like if Lucas didn't play how Lucas does, like the team wouldn't work in any way near the same way. I think again, like going off the idea of like biggest individual impact, I think I think it, it makes sense for being on the class. One thing I will say to that though is I feel like we've mentioned it with every every other 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 sort of nomination and every other award, but Cadus is the main caller for seven. He is the brain behind it, and I feel like. That's something that, because you're const because Cadus, I feel like you're constantly controlling, deciding, making sure that your team is doing everything that you want to do and playing the game how you want to play. You're not kind of in that potential area to go off on these big plays. You're you're constantly trying to keep control of everything, make sure everything plays your way, and that's what makes Seven such a good team. And I feel like you're a in the in the scoring, you're a victim of your own success in that regards. Like you're a phenomenal main caller, and I do think next season we should have a main caller of the season, something like that. You know, someone like who stands out, brain of the out. season, you know? like of the season or the something. Season. Because I feel like that is a big um, a big factor on that. Is Lucas is phenomenal and amazing at doing good plays, but in the same way that Captain was given the opportunity to play his heart out, Lucas was given that same opportunity on. I feel like that's something to take into account. And Lucas has turned up to land and performed really well, and especially during Copenhagen games. And then following that, after the season, we've got it on. Um, we've got it on the I sixty five, and he did a great job there as well. So, for yourself, Cadis, for for me, I feel like you're an amazing main caller, and I think that's something that has to be said out loud. Yeah, thanks, bro. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree that Lucas definitely had like a bigger impact as a demo man on the game than I did, especially in the season. I feel like the only games, like by my standards, the only games where I even played good, like not even talking great, just good, were kind of like the grand finals of the season. And if we're going to like add LAN in there, then there was like, okay, grand finals of LAN and some other games. But for the most part, this was one of my probably personally for me was like one of my most disappointing like individual performances that I think I've had. So I think I think Lucas deserves it purely on like demo man, like impact, output, etc. Um but I would echo what Am said about Domo. I think Domo deserves more plaudits than he gets because like I uh if you want to put it this way, I, I coached Domo for that one season where I had to sell and he filled mm -hmm. in for seven. And dude, he is just so adaptable. Like with some people, it's like you have to like, you know, you, you give them like a correction or a pointer and say, oh, you know, next time you face this situation, I think you should do it like this. You, you do that to most people and it's like that has to happen. Like that situation has to come up five times before they learn. But with, with Domo, it was just like I would tell him this thing once and boom, it's just done. Fixed. Never makes that mistake again. Completely like absorbs the information and applies it instantly. And it's like I don't think I've ever seen a guy who does it quite as like efficiently as he does in that regard. So. I think if Domo if Domo sticks around, that's gonna be he's gonna be a guy to watch out for. That's for sure. He's good. In. He's good. He's good lad. Good boy. And he's always modern Twitch chat. So you gotta be, you gotta watch out for him. You know. 
He's going to the Navy, I think, so he's done with TF2. No. no. Oh. Well, that's ruined it, hasn't it? That's just ruined that. Right, next one. No, next award. Next, next award. Next, 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 next. next. But, um, though, before um, we go um, next, like, um, right. the crazy yeah. thing is that we have three really strong demo here, and that's to, like, and so it means that Eames is not here, uh, Elacor is not here, and that War is not here. And that, to me, is like, there's been nice. times in TF2 where there's been a shortage of a good demo man. But right now it is like the complete opposite, and uh, I'm gonna be biased here, but I just wanna put a little shout to War because, so I played with him at at LAN, and uh, I was genuinely impressed at how good he was. I didn't, re I really didn't expect him to be that good, and uh, he won us some games that I, I think we would have lost. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like who anyone out of these six players could have been in the top three, uh, and I don't know. If, that's crazy to me that we have so many good demo men. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that makes sense. Well, we're going to pass it on now to DCS to read out the next award. We we may have a lot of good demo men, but apparently only two medics uh, have earned the respect of the Premiership player peer group. Also, yes. demo is going to the Air Force, not the Navy. Yeah, oh, <laughs> correct. Yes, right. Important. <laughs> because, uh, Seeds and Raymond were the only ones who got nominated by the Prem teams. I want to know where Ombreak is in here. I was busy. A prem previous <laughs> prem winner, right? Yeah, when uh, nobody else was playing the game. <laughs> but I, I think this day. this is the award that uh, where Lion is going to have the most impact because uh, unfortunately for Seeds, I think Ramon is going to take it. And the main reason for that is I think most people remember the game between Faint and Ascent NA, and uh, the two drops from Seed were really detrimental to to Faint, and I think that. That's one of the medic is such an unforgiving class. Like whatever you do, good. No, no one's gonna notice. But as soon as you drop, even if it's not your fault, people are gonna just go down on you and like call you bad. And uh, spoken yeah. like a medic main right there. And, yeah. uh, really I don't know. Fault. Unfortunately, like Seeds really is really good, but why? What do people remember from Seeds? Him dropping to Bob? Uh, not Bob. I don't remember who was the sniper, but yeah slam nish uh, slam nish and that and yeah yeah that's that that's his land for him that's so so unfortunate but that's land for him i feel like i feel like it it, it is a difficult one for me because i i i i rate them both for very different things i feel like raymond has so much experience and so much knowledge and is so solid in the way he plays medic that you can't fault him. Like a lot of games he'll play, sometimes you won't even notice that Raymond's playing. And that's an amazing thing because he just empowers his team so much. Sometimes, like, there was, I think uh, it was Sunshine Middle. He had the 1v1 with Laz and sent Laz, like, rocketing into the air and then hit and so made him fall to full, full damage. But I feel like the thing with Seeds is Seeds has really been proving himself and that guy always has uber and i know that's a really weird thing to say but he always seems to build faster than anyone else he always seems to have uber quicker than everyone else and i think that's a real real detriment to how much he's improved over the coming seasons obviously he was again he's a bit of a, a, a seven prodigy, prodigy as he played played with the uk this so I that's most of prem at this point that's most of the top That's four. pretty much. Pretty much. There's oh, always okay, going to be clarify, a prank. I hate to interrupt very suddenly, right? We were going to make a meme at LAN. We didn't have time. Where we had uh, Cadus announce um, a brand new 7 roster, which was literally every player at LAN who'd ever been on 7. And I think we got up to like 13 different players at one point, right? <laughs> we were just going to crowd everyone together, just be like, this is the team, you know? Next LAN, boys. Next LAN. You'll, you'll see it. Yeah, Adiski's going to start the Academy squad. We've been in talks. We've been in talks. Okay. Anyhow, should we Anyhow, move on? Yeah, we will move yeah. on. We'll move on. Uh, I'll so. give you a little bit of um, information here because I feel like this reflects the discussions really well. Um, Seeds actually got more nominations than Raymond did from the Premiership player. But you can guess. But Raymond is the medic of the season. But by a really close margin. So I feel like if we had this vote before land, maybe it would be the other way around. But as yes, we just gonna show in a second. It was that very, 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 close. very close. That is very, very close between between the two. I'm gonna open that up to the floor. Ebly, got anything 
Do you want to say on that? Does that surprise you or? Um, not. I'm, I'm. I'm actually surprised it was that close. I thought Raymond would win more based on name. Um, I think mm. Seeds is really, really good. I think they said you know that there were some interesting games at land which were, um, you know, would put Seeds in a slightly worse light. And obviously, when you're against the team who won, it is always kind of difficult, especially on like medic as well. On half the time, people just care about how many deaths you got, how many like weird drops you got. But no, I think I think people are respecting how much like Seeds is doing with this team. I will say, I can't remember who it was, but I was talking to someone at LAN and they were saying about how Seeds, like on mid fights, is absolutely infuriating to play against because somehow Faint will just stand around with both scouts next to their medic, send their three guys in uh, and play like a 3 3, just kind of like send people in, hope for the best, and then they'll just win. And then even if they don't win, like Seeds will always get out. And I feel like that's part of kind of Seeds' strengths or at least like perceived strengths because he'll get out so much of the time because he plays a different role to a lot of the other medics in Prem. Like they just play differently around those hills. Maybe I'm crazy. I can't remember who I was talking to. Someone who was some some big brain. But no, I think I think that, that, that that's very respectable from a Seeds' point of view. I think um I think he can he can topple Raymond, you know, give, give it a season or two. He'll be uh, he'll be on top. I feel like Seeds is the most like fundamentally sound medic that I've seen in a long time in like at least in European TF2 anyway like when you're playing against him on like okay let's just say like low pressure games you know like regular season games scrims etc like the guy doesn't die he he's like you know leaving every fight like at a, at a good time like not getting caught out you know, when you just have like, he never has these like random deaths that other medics seem to have, you know, like you can't just like send a random sack in and seeds like drop super or something like that. You have to work your ass off to get those plays like on seeds. Uh, but then when it comes to like the high pressure games, I feel like, I don't know, it, it's not like he's bad by any means. He's still really, really good. But that side of seeds kind of dissipates a little bit and the cracks start to show. And I feel like whereas to the contrary, Raymond. Raymond does like numerous blunders, like when it doesn't really matter. But then when the pressure's on and it's like the actual big game, then suddenly Raymond is just like a god again out of nowhere. Like well, we've we've played some games with Raymond where like you know it, it, it didn't really matter if we won or lost, but you know he would have like some this big mistake here, this big mistake there. But all of those disappear like when it's the, when it's the big games. Whereas with seeds, it's like suddenly like I, I remember playing against him. And it was like, wow, Seeds is dead. It's like, Seeds would never die there normally because it because it was land. It was like, I don't know, you know, comms are going crazy, more pressure, like more intensity just in general in the atmosphere of the game. And Seeds would have these deaths that I would never normally expect to see from him. And I don't know if that's Seeds himself or it's just the nature of like how the team operates under like high pressure environments or land environments in particular. But I feel like there's two kind of, there's two kind of versions of both of these medics. And Seeds on a day-to-day -day basis is actually... The, the more solid medic for me but when it when it comes down to crunch time raymond raymond still edges it my opinion anyway no i uh, that that makes that makes perfect sense especially in regards to you know i feel like we it was mentioned before but lan is going to affect people a lot uh, people's opinions and raymond is so good at lan like whenever it's a LAN environment, he just turns up and he will just do really, really, really well. But uh, the only the only other medic that I'd like to just quickly speak on that isn't here is actually Condog Connor. I feel like I feel like Con Connor is one of those meds that gets a lot of stick, but I He's feel that's because a lot. yeah, and I also feel like it's because of his play style. He is a very aggro med. Can, if you compare the play, play style of Seeds and Raymond, he doesn't quite play the same way. I think it's kind of because Ams, you kind of just drag him into a lot of fights. <laughs> yeah, Kondog, Kondog has an unenvi unenviable position of having to follow Ams on all of his... <laughs> yeah, on his exploit. escapades. <laughs> Connor, we're trading, we're trading, we're winning. Yes, win, nice. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. No, try putting Seeds or Raymond on Ascent and see how that works. It's, it wouldn't be good, <laughs> honestly. No, I think Kondog improved so much. Like from when I started playing with him up until now, he improved so much as a player. And not only, you know, mechanically and decision making wise and all this, but he also improved like on the comms so much. Like by the end of Ascent, he was like telling me, like, no, I'm fucking get back. We're not doing this. Like, <laughs> he, was, uh, he was like actually becoming like a really smart player as well. And I think people are never going to see him like that. They're always going to see him as, you know, lesser than these two players. And 
maybe he isn't as good as Caesar's mechanically, or maybe he, you know, doesn't have the experience that Raymond has in these like big games. So he's always, um, you know, going to be rated as a lesser medic. But I wouldn't have been able to play with anybody else the way that we did. And um, I don't want to scout anymore just because I don't have Condog anymore. That's like the only reason. Because I learned to play with Condog and we were like a duo, you know? So yeah, I think for me, Condog is still the best out of all these medics here. Just, you know, for me personally. But, um, you know, objectively looking at it, I think um, Raymond deserves the award still because oh, yeah, he's, he's a beast. But yeah. I'm even already. <laughs> even objectively, it's worth saying that Kondok has, like, like, as someone who's been playing against him for like several seasons, he's improved like a hell of a lot. Because I mean, there was a time I think maybe it was when you guys first picked him up, or maybe it was some other team that he was on, like when they were like our like you know they were number two, we were number one, something like that. Like first time it was that situation, and I remember like our calls would be like in stalemates, like ah you know just sack onto Kondok because he's. You know, he's the weak link. He'll, he'll probably drop or something like that, right? Like, that was just, like, a, a mentality we had when we played against him. But, like, that, it's like day and night now compared to that. Like, you, you can't get away with that against him now. He's just, like, his fundamentals have improved so much. Like, I feel like it's really tough being compared to Raymond and Seeds because I feel, feel like those guys are actually, you know, like, some of the best medics we've ever seen, like, in, in Europe, mm. especially. But Condog like still deserves like credit, right? Like there's there's no shame in falling but just behind these two guys. Oh, a hundred percent. And uh one I think we've got one last one. And uh I think this one's gonna be an interesting one. Do you wanna bring it forward for us, DCS? Well, it's not quite the last category. Last one, but, but uh... before we get do a bit of a recap and then we're gonna go to the <laughs> most important one. It's all right, it's all right. We got um as I like to call it sniper of the season i.e. off-class of the season. And the nominees were Starkey, Eertkink, and Kredu. Who's the best sniper? I think that's the first season where, like, I would agree with you for the, all the previous season where it would be best sniper of the season, but I think, like, I think Gink should win it uh, for the sole reason that he's more than a sniper now. Gink is playing spy, he's playing heavy. He's really, he's a utility and uh, I think that's why he should win because Credo is not an off classer; he's just a sniper. And sometimes he play NG or uh, or yeah, heavy. Yeah, he's a really, well, heavy, yeah, really heavy. Yeah, I, like, I feel like I feel like Gink takes gives more meaning to off classer than anyone else. I can do. I it. It's yeah, a difficult one. No, you didn't kill everything. Like, I think, <laughs> I think that the the main thing for me is like, yeah, I feel like, I feel like it it is going to be between Starkey and Credo just because of how proficient they are on Sniper and how they how they've impact. One thing I love about Starkey as a, when he plays Sniper is he always comes from weird angles. Like, I know lands like a lot of people have forgot the main season, and I struggle to remember it because Lan was such a such an intense time for me. But I remember watching Starkey play and some of the angles on Gullywash he would take were really random, but really, really well thought out. They weren't an angle that you'd expect to be pe peaked from from a sniper. And I feel like that's going to be a big impact on this is, again, that performance on LAN. And I feel like Credu stuck to his main guns most of the time during LAN. Like, he stuck mainly to playing... Um, Scout, he did have some really good good opportunities and moments, but I th I, f I feel like it, it will be close. I feel like there's a lot of love for Gink, but there's a lot of love for all three of these players, all retrospectively for how they play the game. But, um, uh, I have to strongly disagree with you here. Like okay. you, said, you said that Credo mainly stick to his scout, but we've seen plenty of him playing Sniper at land, like a yeah. lot. That there are maps where Ascent would go into mid, first mid with, with Credo on Sniper, so... They relied on him a lot, so I don't think mm. it's fair to say that Kudu stick to his to his scout, uh, and because that's not true, I think. And uh, Gink is also a really good sniper. I don't. I feel like we're gonna have to make a, a stronger case for him, but it's not the case of Gink playing NG against Kudu and Starkey playing sniper because when yeah. Faint needed a sniper, it was Gink who was playing sniper. Yeah, Gink, Gink's done some very very good jobs in sniper, especially during the the main season. I remember. Uh, one play on, I think it was uh, Granary. But what we'll do, DCS, do you want to take it away for us? With pleasure. Um, let me say first that this was an incredibly close category. 
if you do not consider the um, votes with two nominees, um, third place, which is Yet King, um, had the most votes of all third place players for this evening, twenty eight percent to be precise, and mm-hmm. the winner of our class of the season won by six total votes. Wow! Wow! And it's Starkey. So Starkey is our class of the season, but incredibly close. Incredibly close. Incredibly. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. That's that's kind of crazy. I feel like it's uh I feel like it makes a lot of sense, right? Because all three players there are kind of crazy. Um I know Wait uh wait. Well, why has King got thirty five percent votes? No, the um, it should happens. be the other way around. So King has twenty eight percent and Ah. Okay. Yeah, the graphic is wrong on stream. Play graphic. It's even I mean, worse. Fair. Like all three players are like really good. They're they're really really solid. They're off casting. Like they play it well, <laughs> but don't overuse it within their teams. Which I think is solid. Like I don't know. I feel like uh, for me, I I think I I brought it down to like Stark and Gink, and then I think I like tossed a coin or something because I feel like Cody is really really good, but. Um, a while back, a couple of players said something like they they think that sometimes when Credu when it comes to like Credu spending real time on sniper, it's like a a win more situation. Um, he he can make significant things happen, but can be less impactful when the team is behind than some of the other off classes. And then so that's kind of stuck in my head a bit. So yeah, for me it was like between Stark and Gink mainly, and I think I usually just toss a coin because they're both really good. Really good. So I'm one of those six. Just going to throw it out there. Where's the Where's the Salentes nominations? That guy was the best heavy of the season by a mile. Do you not remember the Viaduct game week two? Spite, not Spite, sorry, Sniper heavy strat. I feel like Sills heavy play was was fundamental. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you nominate him? Did you nominate him? I don't remember who I nominated. To be honest, mm, but that means no. It means I feel like, well, <laughs> I feel let like, me check. Yeah. No, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> oh. saying, you know, still, so, so number one heavy EU. Just gonna, just gonna. Oh put it out God! There. If we do off classing at LAN, I feel like you know. Yeah, like, still would win. Then it. It, like Credo, Credo, Salentes, like best heavies of LAN, definitely. I think they need to like those two fighting out would be a far better award for no reason. Yeah, heavy fist fight win. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that, that heavy fist fight win, but um. Yeah. From there, any closing statements from anyone on that one? And we'll do a quick recap of what's happened so far for the awards. No? 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 no. Okay. So I need to, like, zoom in because I can't see this very well. (laughs) Zoom in. So rounding off the awards so far, we have Best Pocket Scout of the Season going to Thalash. And then we had Best Flank Scout going to Starkey. Captain picking up the pocket soldier once again. We have Salentes on the roaming soldier. Lucas Tank taking up Demo Man. Best Medic going to Raymond. And then Best Off Class are going to Starkey. There's a pattern here, but I don't know if anyone else can spot it. It's difficult. I wonder who Lucas is going to play for next season. Hmm. Kadis, can you confirm <laughs> or deny? Coach Kato? Coach Kato? I can confirm that there are no plans for anything next season. It's all up in the air. Any, anything could happen. That does sound like seven, I'll be honest. You're all going to be like threatening to quit <laughs> or something. That's the strat. I do have one bit of news, though. The next Ooh. category will not have a seven winner. But well, well, can't. Because it's that debut legal? of the season. <gasps> it's the rookie oh of the season award, and none of the seven players are rookies, so... It's open season now, guys. Uh, we have had Ever X, Narkari, and Kra? Kroix? Kra? Oh, Carbo. Kroy. I don't know. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there shouldn't be any argument here. Kroy. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Have you, have you ever seen me cast before? Hello? <laughs> I, think, I think I went for Ever X because he had an absolute dicking game versus um, a set on Granary and I didn't see a bunch of the other games um, but he kind of pounded and when you're against soldiers like Polygon and Zebesai and you're still owning, I was like okay that's kind of crazy for someone who's like never played Prem before 
I think that's primarily it. I feel like debut this because whenever TFG tries to cover games, like you, you try and cover every game, but then if you can't cover every game, you cover like some of the biggest teams, right? And then you, you're obviously going to be covering like the playoffs. So like by the time you get to like debut, is either games which people wouldn't have seen as much of or they wouldn't have seen as much of these players because they wouldn't be in the playoffs. So it's always, I feel like it, it comes down to people's, uh, I don't know, any, any personal biases or just happens to be what games they were like looking at at the time. I feel like I was probably a victim of that primarily in my vote for Everex. Uh, I know a lot of people were saying things about Makari, but I don't know how much of that is. I, I, I personally voted for Everex. I thought he did an amazing season as well. But um, I'm pretty sure that's not the team he was on. I'm pretty sure it's War and Sons. Uh, isn't that's that what a high team? At some point. Same thing. Close enough. Basically um, the same. Basically the same thing. Yeah, again, but, if yeah. you take all that into account, I don't think there should be any... Like, if, if Everex doesn't win it, there's some hidden powers at work here, because I don't know, I feel like Goon Squad has a de- had a decent first season into Prem, but uh, when you got the rankings, Everex team was ranked higher. They almost made it into playoffs. He had a pretty good one as well, so if that's not enough, I don't know what is. Well, uh, DCS, take us out of our misery. What is the uh, premier debut of the season? Uh, in third place, we have <laughs> the Italian dude, Cro. <laughs> the Italian dude, Cro. <laughs> I, I, I tried to navigate this one as best as I could. Uh, and second place goes to Narakari AVX wins by a good amount of the margin, fifty percent, roughly half of the votes. So he's on one son, but he's also the rookie of the season. Oh, it is pronounced Croy. Croy? That's right. Yeah. yeah but I feel like Ever- I feel like Everex was only the only real candidate for this. Like I I personally didn't nominate him because I actually forgot that it was his debut. Like I didn't realize. Like when I would like watch some of the I think it was mainly War who was streaming their games. He would be like a you know a very vocal player in that team, and he just seemed to fit like a glove. You know, like it didn't it didn't actually even occur to me that it was his debut season. Like you know, I, I don't think he was like incredible or anything, but he seemed like he'd been there. You know, for like you know, he just seemed like a prem player to me. Whereas with these other guys, they kind of were just like you know, in the most respectful way, more of like the the in like the filler teams, if you know what I mean. Whereas Warren Sons were like. You know, legitimately up there contesting teams at times. And Didn't he also and... main call for the season uh, for his first team? I'm not sure uh, if he was, it, not sure it, if he was it, main calling, it, but he was very was vocal. Same. Yeah, if it was the same, uh, he was at LAN. I think main call was a bit of a a myth in that team, and it was a bit. <laughs> it was a it was a shared responsibility. Let's put it that. Way. Nice. And as as far as nice. ranking goes, I would have put Kwa second ahead of Narkari, and that's how you pronounce the name. Because that's French, it means croce, or I don't know what's the word, cross. Yeah, that's it. Nice. nice. Yeah, a little insight, you know, that's what I'm here for. And, <laughs> Are you any, so convinced? Any, anything you'd like to add on this, Hams? Yeah, I think Everax deserves it. He's quite good. I wouldn't play with him because he's so fucking whingy. But, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a really good player. He's an up-and-comer for sure. I think maybe that's why I didn't realize he was a debut because he just, you know, he complained with the best of them. <laughs> you think he'd been there all his life? Yeah. He suffered a lifetime of misery in Prem from the way he was, uh, the way he was calling. Okay. Moving on, uh, then, I guess. Moving on. Oh, what, what is what is the next one? DCS. Um, I think we're going with cast off the season first. So we have the best player, the most prestigious of all. Uh, at the very end of the show. So for casters, we had a whole bunch of them. We had eight casters nominated, if I remember correctly, which were probably not in order that are shown on stream. Dum Tum, Bum, Grumpy Koi, Yon, Ipoli, B2, Turbotaps, and Cerny. Grumpy, where do you expect to come out on this? Uh, any last. <laughs> I expect last. It's what I deserve. But um, one thing I really, really want to say 
is Cerny and Bum and Jan have done an amazing job considering I, I think it's the first time those guys had been casting for like a whole season. And I feel like they improved so much. I feel like Sunny and Bum did a great job in I series. And I feel like Yon is going from strength to strength. Um and I feel like I feel like we all know who's gonna win it. it we all we all we all we all know it's a certain uh, action hero. But I do feel like um I feel like they need a special shout out. And then we've always got the ever present E Plea Turbo Tabs, uh Dum Tum and myself, who we just we just do it when we can and we enjoy it. But they're definitely people I wanted to uh to definitely shout out for their debuts, so to speak. I don't know if anyone else wants to chip in, anyone watch the casts at all. No. Oh, no, they're always no. play. They're no. always play. It's really hard it's hard to, you know. Yeah. Give info on that because that's not really the thing we 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 usually yeah. play when you cast, so it's hard to have yeah. you inside. But I would say that uh, I'm surprised. Hasn't Kermit casted enough games to be in that? Well, uh, I don't this think is Kermit a, this is this is thing. He didn't ca- he didn't cast enough TFTV ones. Oh, okay, but I feel like that's a really good point because he did all of like the div like pretty much the entirety of Div One on his own. Honorary mention something. That. Kermit's really yeah. good. Yeah, Kermit's Kermit really is good. a fantastic caster, and I I enjoyed casting with him at I series. It was it was amazing, and if I could, I would have voted for him hundred percent. Also, quick but, uh, mention that Mac, Plunk, Eckstein, yeah, and Armbreak also casted but did not make the cut. Not good enough. Just too few games. Unlucky, really. I feel like Thank you for putting that way. Seasons. What about Lucky as well? Did you mention Lucky? He's another one. Uh, oh, Unlucky. yeah. He also Unlucky. had three casts. Just like on back. So just short of nominating. Or getting but nominated. Also a great, great caster as well. Yes. But uh, yeah, do you want to take it away and put me out of my misery? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, in eighth place, we have Cerny. In seventh place, we have Turbotabs. Sixth place, Dum Tum. <laughs> Grumpy cannot believe it. I'm not last. No, you're not, not last. last. Fifth place, Yon. Fourth place, Ipoli. Third place, Bum. Grumpy's in the final two. I'm second. It was, it wins. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's actually quite close this this season. Like I've it, never seen it. It's uh, gonna be that close, but it is Peter. Yes, oh, everybody's yeah. favorite Danish action hero. Yes. One cast of season yet again. Tying the legendary Admirable, I want to say, in total Ooh. awards won on etf 2 r I got 18%? Yeah. 18.5, so correctly rounded, that's a 19. The hype is real. I feel like... Uh... I feel like Beta tends to get my vote most seasons just because genuinely TFTV, uh, TFTV would kind of collapse with him. Just mm. because between like how regularly he casts and does production and like he's really good at literally everything he does. Um, I feel like Beta just should get an award every single season. Yeah. For being I feel like, like this is what it is. This is like his yeah. honorary award for each season yeah. he's been involved in the game. Literally just, just keep doing you, bro, and then everyone else can like for the scraps, you know? Which is fair enough. Yeah. He's, he's a big boy. I am a little upset to see Turbo Tabs at seventh place. Um, I, you gotta love Turbo Tabs. <laughs> Maybe people didn't like how he shoved off the Americans from the final stage. Wait, what? I didn't see this. At Insomnia, he was like, yeah, you can go now, shush. And then he gave... Uh, <laughs> Goodbye. 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 <laughs> because the son was kind of like lingering around. He's like, shush, go. Oh. Don't need you anymore. <laughs> yeah, it, was re- it was really loud and confusing. We didn't really know what the hell was going on. It was good. But, no one uh, cares about casters, right? No one really cares about casters. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it's a sad truth here. There's one That's more. Right. And the winner, I was told by a production... Wins a last long fi low wave, low fi winter long low wave, low fi long wave. <laughs> a hat, a really nice hat, uh, <laughs> only be given out from Critcast. But 
first of all, we have to uh, get into the nominees. Um, we had Thalash, Lucas, Cadiz, and Captain. So seven versus Lucas, basically. Oof. I wonder if it's going to be the same as the situation I mentioned an hour ago where Kados wouldn't win the moment of the season but would take the best player of the season because people would realize being the best at your class and being the best player are two different I wouldn't be surprised if it would happen. We all praise how 7 is, you know, 7 tied together and always good and everything. Grumpy said that earlier. It usually comes down to one guy and uh, I don't know, is that going to happen again? I've gone about it. I think no. I think I think if if a seven player wins it, I think it'll be Thalash. That's my hot take. But I feel like there's a decent chance for Lucas because people really like Lucas. Well, for if Lucas takes it, I don't think that would make much sense because he's a good demo, but he relies a lot on Papi's work. We've mentioned that before. Yeah, he's well, the that, best that, demo, that was... but he's not the best player. It's like it's really two really different things in my eyes. Yeah, I I agree. That's that that's why that's why my vote went to Thalash. I based exactly like on what you said. Um, like I wouldn't be able to vote for Lucas based on that. I thought I usually tend to vote for Cadus on these kind of things, just because being like the leader of the team is like really, really significant. It's the reason why seven plays the way that they do. But at the same time, I kind of wanted one season to give credit to the fact that Thalash was incredibly consistent across the entire season, like doing everything he needed to. But um yeah, I don't know. I feel like this can be an award which is affected a lot by kind of popularity. I feel like there's a decent chance that People's Champion takes it just because people want Lucas to to win more, even if, yeah, I, I agree he should be demo of the season, but I don't think he should be best player. Um, Kaylas, tell us. Um, I remember the season you stepped off and Domo took your spot. You mentioned at the end of the season how Talash had to get into the shape of main calling a bit in your stuff. Is that something that he kept doing or...? as he stepped back uh, as soon as you came back? Uh, I think as I came back, like he would carry on calling quite a lot. Um, but we kind of hit a few roadblocks as the season went on. And eventually we came to the decision that he needed to actually call a bit less, just so we had a bit more of a coherent, like a coherent plan. And we kind of went back to the, uh, the full, the full uh, Nazi, Nazi dictator me calling style. And I think it worked out better for us in the end, just because we had a more cohesive team. Like, I don't know, it was weird. Like, at, at the start, we just kind of went with the flow and just kind of let everyone chip in here and there. But I felt like, I don't know, I, I felt like it worked better just to have me kind of take the reins again in, in after, like, after a couple of months of playing. It took, me, it took me a while to get back into it, though. So he kind of allowed me to, you know, he allowed me to, like, resettle back into the team. Um, the one person we've not heard of just for a second is I do want to pass it on to Ams. Do you have a do you have an opinion on this, bud? Um, I think if you vote for uh, like the mechanically best player, it has to be captain. I think if you vote for the player who made the biggest difference for his team, it's really Cadiz because you know his team won and he main calls and leads that team. So I think yeah, I voted for captain just because I think captain just has more impact on the game on his team than any other player in the game you know i think he's the closest you get to carrying a tf2 team i think what captain does so i would for captain but i think um yeah it depends on your definition of best player i guess i think you should be captain or Hades. i think lucas like people love lucas because he's really good like mechanically and does these like shiny aggressive plays and stuff so i think he might win it but yeah, in my opinion, it's Captain Arcadis every time. Okay, and I think after that, I think we should move on to DCS. Let us know who won best player of the season. Oh boy, that's going to be upset gamers in chat. I'm going to tell you that. So in fourth place, um, unfortunately, Cadis with what? 18... That's surprising. 18.3%. I'm going to read the percentages, although v doesn't want me to. But this one is quite interesting because Kate is 18%, Captain 20%, Thalash 21%, and Lucas 40%, 40.6% wins the player of the season and gets a nice shiny hat with it. Congratulations, Lucas. Whoa! 
your pizza. That's, your pizza. A, that's a huge difference. That's a huge difference. Um, okay, so maybe I'm, I don't know. Can we assume that the votes have been watered down between the three seven players, maybe? That's the first option. I was going to say, yeah. Seven yeah. wins. Like probably seven, that, seven by, men yeah, divided by, by yeah, combined. Like that's, that's... Yeah, combined, seven wins. Cadus, you win. Doesn't matter, mate. <laughs> sound, that <laughs> sound. Wow. Are you sad, Cadus? You look. Me, I've like won more of these awards than I've even can count at this point. So it's, <laughs> it's no, different, no difference to me. It's nice to see new names. New names, you know, take take credit for the hard work they put into the game. You're you're currently the second most decorated six v six player ever. Yeah. It, it, in, would, in it, would, it would just it would just be wrong if I overtook Mike, you know. So I think it's it's better yeah. this way. It's better this way. But uh, ooh, uh, ooh. have we got the? Wait, is this the totals? So yeah, so. Wait, why Starkey? am I not on this? Because you don't win nothing. So after, after one, one season of awards, Lucas has got in the top 10. That's insane. Slentes. Then you've got like, you've got like the, ca- the, the two casters of Admirable and Beater on seven. That's nuts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, let me read the full award because we'd have had to make some cuts to uh, have the graphic fit the screen. We have Mike 17, Cadiz 15, before the show. Um, Sharky 12, Starkey before the show was 12. I think he's at 14 now. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Captain now 11. Um, the Lash now 10. Admirable 7, Credit 7. Let it be Merlin. Zebusai 6, Xerox 6, Raymond 5, Ellie 5, Bibbon 5, Extrema 5, F2 5, Drac 4, Numlocked 4, Tweak 4, Nox 4, Tech, Elecour 4, Tiger 3, Sideshow 3, Gear 3, and a lot of people people don't even know. Mr. Epic also 3. Me too. Thank you. I'm back too, but on, buddy. I could have fit on the table, I'm just gonna but say. Do you have three awards? No, I have two. Uh, <laughs> Seeds and ants are here with two and plus zero. Oh yeah. Yeah, Ombrek was left out. <laughs> See? Out Shout out to Ombrek. Light has been shed and now. <laughs> oh yeah, if you're interested you can score through that oh, in chat. Okay. I have link to link. Yeah. Got that. Shocking, you yeah, know, shocking. I feel like uh, yeah, I feel like the whole seven thing, maybe you watered down some of the votes a little bit. There's obviously so many good players on seven, and if you want seven to like, win <laughs> Uh, bye, Ombre. Actually, bye. yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. Actually, right, awards are done. Uh, ombre has gone to bed now, so uh, yeah, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Wait, what makes sense? He's just gone. He's just he's oh, gone. he's back. <laughs> oh, he's back. Yeah, I'm he's back. But um, Tried a bit, but yeah, do we have an overall of all of the awards? We do so. I mean, we've all had it before, but I will just do one last roundup. So for the ETF2L Prem- Premiership Season 33 Awards, we have Best Pocket Scout was voted to be Thalash. The Best Flank was Starkey. The Best Pocket Roamer was Captain. The Best Roaming Soldier was Salentes. Then the Best Demo Man was Lucas Stank. Then Best Medic was Raymond. Best Off Classer was Starkey. The Best Prem Debut was Everex, and the best player was Lucas Stank, and then our boy Peter won out the best caster. So that is the roundup. I don't know. Shall we? Anyone want a closing statement? I don't know what the plan is from here. I usually expect a message from production. But uh, yeah, shall we? Uh, shall we? Closing on the awards, and then shall we talk about the future? So, little, anyone got any closing? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But uh, anyone got any closing statements? Anything they want to add? Anything they they feel like needs to be said? It was a good season. We've said at the beginning. I think it's fitting to say at the end. Uh, one of the most competitive we had in a while. Uh, two teams able to contend for first spot a good one as well. I don't know. I feel like there's still cool things. That- 
I think um I think objectively speaking, the next season, season thirty four, is going to be one of the. Uh, it's not that it's going to be uninteresting, but it's going to be one of the shakiest seasons of the next 12 months because it's the only season that we have which doesn't directly come before LAN. Yeah. So I feel like next season is going to be the kind of season where maybe some teams form and want to get themselves sorted or maybe some you know players kind of take a season just to kind of do something a little bit different before getting their like big keen teams on for uh, in preparation for Copenhagen, which will be after season 35, I guess. Um, I think the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to next season is I feel like there will be a shakeup. Some teams will be significantly different. Uh, I think we can end up with seven maps uh, instead of nine. Uh, I know there's not going to be any significant whitelist changes. So I'm hoping, my biggest thing is I'm, I'm hoping to see Faint um, continue to develop themselves more, like solidify themselves more in that kind of top three to top two to top one kind of position. I hope they spend the next season working really hard. Um, to try and kind of, you know, get themselves like right near the top. And obviously any situation where seven is in like a, you know, big old question marks about what they want to do is an opportunity for other teams to exploit. But um, I think, I think something else that I, th- I remember having, I think it might've been yourself, Ams, after one game was this definitely felt like one of the most competitive seasons we've had in a while. By closing it out, there was some really, really good moments where things happened that we didn't expect. And I think that's such an amazing thing. I feel like the top three were so close together this season, more than any any other for me. I feel like it is a case of as soon as it gets to playoffs and, and the end of a season, seven just lock themselves down and dominate the competition. But during the main season, especially, there were some great moments. There were some really good moments. Like, um, I'll start with you, Ams, because I mentioned you. Like, how was this season to play com- competition-wise? We mentioned it before, but people just join in. Is it one to remember? I think so. I mean, Sebozoi comeback is what made it special for me. Playing yeah. with again was fucking awesome. Um, in the beginning, it looked a bit rough for us, but we pulled through in the end, and it, yeah, I'm really proud of how far my team came. Honestly, um, honestly, from the beginning, like I kind of saw the potential in the roster, and I knew that we could, um, or that I knew that we would beat faint if you know we kept improving at the pace that we did. And yeah, like from my perspective, it was one of the most like satisfying seasons because it just felt so good. Like I feel like we proved a lot of people wrong, and I feel like we proved that. You don't have to play like by the book all the time, you know. You can kind of do um, other stuff too. And we didn't beat seven in the end, um, or we didn't even really come close to it. But everything else that we did, uh, I was really proud of my team and how we performed. And uh, you know, as as like the whole season, like the competition, I think it was hopefully entertaining for everybody else as well to watch. Because yeah. You know, you saw some old names like Sebo, and you saw some really good games. And I think Feind improved so much as a team as well. As they proved at LAN, they've like improved a lot. So, yeah, good season, in my opinion. And from there, Cadus, how did you feel season overall? For the yeah, competition size? I think, yeah, I think it was a good season. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm old and jaded, you know. Like, online TF2 to me is just like preparation for the, for the LAN that's coming after it. But I can see how this season was definitely like one of the more one of the more interesting ones in recent memory. I think we have like we have to give a lot of credit to uh to Faint because I feel like those guys have done everything like at least in my opinion they've done everything like the right way in terms of how they've gone about improving like for just just as an example at the start of the season they were trialing pocket scouts right and Thomas is a guy we didn't actually talk about at all tonight. And I think he definitely should have been on the list for Pocket Scouts, to be fair. But he wasn't. But that aside, like, they had the choice between Credu and Tomas. And, I mean, like, to anyone maybe who's not, like, familiar with how you build teams at a higher level, Credu would seem like the obvious choice, right? Like, star power, like, massive, like, you know, massive skill, huge reputation. But they chose Tomas. And I think that was the right decision for them, right? Like, that shows that they're going about building their team the right way like getting the right pieces that they need to facilitate like proper team play 
and like a proper like unified idea of how to play the game all under kind of this like all encompassing like main caller that they have in Pappy. And I just think, yeah, the way they've gone about improving together as a roster is it's a, it's like a really good example for, I think for other teams for what they should follow. Like a, a lot of it is like matching up with how I went about things when I started like reason that then became seven later, like not necessarily just picking up the biggest names and, and all that kind of stuff, but you know, just, just like sticking together with like the right, the right types of personalities. Um, because they were like, you know, they're, they're the team that's come up, like, right? Like, we're like, you know, we're the old guys who've been here forever, like, as top players. Like, Ascent is mostly like, a, you know, a team that's like, you know, predicated on mainly its like individual skill. Whereas, yeah, Fain are a team who, yeah, Fain are a team who just serve as like proof that if you stick together and do, you know, do things as a team, grow together, then you, you get the rewards from that. So, massive props to Fain for this season, in my opinion. And then Ombrak, Hi. how was playing this season? I thought it was fine. Uh, I'm, I'm, I haven't done as well as uh, Kiddos and Nam, so I'm not going to say yo, I almost won. I'm uh, but no, it was fine. Like It's fun. It's always fun to play the game. Uh, I'm really excited to see what's, what's going to happen in the near future because um, Faint and Seven look like they're going to stay the same or similar at least. Well. It looks like Amps has a bit of more of a, a building session happening. We're going to see what's happening. I'm looking at team page and I see uh, interesting things already. Uh, so we're going to see how that happens. And I'm all excited for everything that's going to lead to Copenhagen because, as Kayla said, for us as a community, I think lands are what we are looking forward to. And uh, I don't know, again, I think we have cool times ahead of us and I'm excited to see what's going to happen. But uh, from there, Evely, do you want, got any closing statements about season 33 you want to say? Uh, good season, good competition, fun games, good casters, good players, lovely people. Let's go to shout outs. Well, uh, one, one shout out I'd like to say is next season. Let's just have a quick shout out about next season. DCS, do you want to say anything about season 34? Get us all hyped and excited? I mean, season 44 is basically here, right? Uh, yeah. The announcement has been made. The signups are open. Pram teams do not forget to sign up early because uh, I think everyone has time until the 21st. But whoever wants to join the Premiership has to sign up by September 14th. So, and we have currently no signups for Prem. Uh, That's going to be disappointing. Uh, it ends in five days. If, if, if I remember that right. Uh, so you guys have to sign up, otherwise we can't do the preseason playoff stuff, and then it's going to be a whole mess. Uh, we have a cash prizes for this season as well from our lovely ad revenue. So please um, disable the ad blocker when you use ETF Terra, because we actually get money from that a little bit. But you know, every every bit helps. Uh, if you're interested in sponsoring the season, or you know someone who is, you can direct them to staff at EFT. Uh, etf2l.org, write an email or just ping Ayoshi or me in Discord. Uh, be much appreciated. I know Find Gaming um, helped out two seasons ago. But as you all know, money is short in our community and uh, yeah, every bit helps us to grow the price for a little bit. Maybe get seven to play next season when the, when the money is right. Um, other than that, you find um, all the maps, well, the six maps we have decided on, and the schedule on the season homepage, which is in chat right now. And yeah, have a look out uh, on our main page um, on our newsfeed for updates on season 34. Wonderful. And now we will go around the round of shout outs now we've got that. So I'll start off with you, Eplee. Have you got any shout outs you'd like to, to give? Shout-outs to the nominees and you guys. Uh, I was quite difficult to do shout-outs for like an award show. I mean, I'm just going to shout-out the season as a whole. Shout-out anyone who's going to be uh, playing next season. Like Sensor said, get your applications in. Um, if you're applying for like low or mid or Div 2 or Div 1 or whatever, um, get your screenshots in because I know teams are stupid and don't do that. I think I've been, I've done that many times. Get your screenshots in. Don't be stupid. Make sure you actually like attach them properly and like you know do your things sensibly because otherwise 
you make the admins have an actual mess of uh, a provisional divs and you kind of ruin things. Uh, but apart from that, um, yeah, shout out to uh, the future of TF2. That'll always be sweet. And then from there, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off this graphic. I had a plan in my head, but it's all gone to mess. So, uh, well, DCS, do you want to give any quick shout outs to any friends, family, anything like that? You know, usually I give a whole bunch of shout outs, but this evening I want to concentrate on two. Uh, first of all, Bloodus, who has retired as a head admin after this season before land. A big, Aww. big shout out and thank you to Bloodus for your hard work. He was insanely active and he always put his heart into this, uh, into this project. And he, he just kind of felt like he can't do that anymore. And he, he only wanted to give us 100%. He didn't want to do it with 90%, 80%. So I respect that. And we still love you. We will always love you. You're a real legend. And speaking of legends, shout out to VTooth. He makes by far the prettiest uh, award shows on stream. So thank you for that. Wonderful. And Cadis, any shout outs? Yeah, um, I would echo the We Too shout out. Thanks for putting in the work behind the scenes, bro. Um, shout out to my team. Like, I haven't really done any interview or anything since like end of season, end of LAN or whatever. But so just shout out to my team for, as always, putting up with my bullshit, tolerating me in my uh, darker moments. And yeah, seeing us through. And uh, shout out to Fribs for, you know, the undying support. And that's it. Oh, wonderful. From there, Ombrak, got any shout outs, my friend? Um, as for usual, shout out to everyone in, involved in like production, casting, anything that we don't see as players, but that's so important to the scene. Uh, shout out to everyone who participated in I-65. The staff was insane, the production was insane, and um, you guys don't get the credit you deserve, obviously. So that's a big shout out. And then anyone who watches the game as well, because this is why we put the show so people can watch it. Shout out to players. I don't know, everybody that plays TF2 and make it the game that it is today, and uh, it's going to be for the month to come and maybe years. So, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. And then from there, Ams. Give us a shout outs, my friend. Yeah, shout out to um, Connor, Predu, Domo, Sebo. Uh, Silentes, Drac, everybody who played with um, Ascent EU, basically. Because, um, yeah, that iteration of the team is dead now. And we're going to be making something new with Polygon, hopefully. We'll see what we get together. But, yeah, the last. Are you playing TF2 seasons... right now? Yeah, I'm shooting bots, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> This is it. This is the it. The farm <laughs> never stops. <laughs> there is no off switch to Ams. He is ready. The next is grinding DM as we speak. Look at him. I apologize. Yeah, I was saying, um, yeah, I enjoyed playing so much with those guys all three seasons. And two lands, it's been really fun. I feel really blessed to have been able to play with them, you know? Um, after getting caught from seven brutally, but I was never, <laughs> you never laughed, a good team again. You but, uh, <laughs> no, I enjoyed playing with those guys so much. And uh, yeah, I'm going to miss them. going to miss them all a bunch. But, yeah, shout out to those guys. And yeah, thank you guys for having me. And uh, yeah. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. I, uh, I guess I'll do some shots. I want to shout out everyone who's joined me on this uh, award show. It's been amazing. Shout out to everyone watching on chat. And I also do want to give a massive shout out personally to everyone I spoke to at I-65 and everyone I've spoken to past um, past like i65 and about casting and stuff like that because it is it is something i really love doing and i just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for not kicking me off tftv and not getting rid of me and letting me cast as much as you guys have let me cast because it was a pleasure doing the grand finals of uh, an i series and it was a pleasure hosting this and i just want to say that all in all, the TF2 community and especially the competitive community is something special to me. I know I'm 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 newer than most people into the scene, but I just wanted just wanted to use this as an opportunity to say thank you guys so much for for letting me be a part of it, especially at Lands. So shout out to everyone I meet at Lands and all of that. God, that was a long shout out. I do apologize, but yeah. So my name's been Grumpy Coy. I've been joined by Eplee. 
DCS, Cadus, Ombrac, and Ams for the ETF2L Premiership Season 33 Awards Show. Thank you all for joining me. And uh, finally, shout out to Jem for being my producer forever. And uh, yeah, shout out to we have. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Bye. Bye. Bye.